everyone, I'm Caitlin, I'm a picture book illustrator, and today I want to talk to you about how I improve my artwork. I'm going to be putting some pictures up over on this side so you can kind of see how I progress. I have been illustrating for most of my life, just as like a, a preface. I have learned progressively over those years, of course, but I wouldn't say that I started to really take it seriously until like 2019, I believe. So at that point, I had been working exclusively with like a digital program. Um, and I really wanted to be like an actual painter, I wanted to be like a traditional artist, and I was just scared, honestly, <laughs> after doing digital artwork for so long. That's pretty much what I had done since I was a kid. That was my first foray in art, and like, I know most people kind of start with traditional art and then work their way into digital, but for me it was like a totally opposite kind of thing. I remember making that transition from digital to traditional and thinking, this is so scary, like, I cannot control Z anymore, it's everything so much more permanent when it's like paint. I have to manually mix the colors, there's just... And like actually handling the brush and things like that, there is a lot more like tangible physical elements um, that is quite different from digital art. So obviously there are fundamental skills that kind of apply to both, but yeah, it, w it was making that switch for me was really really intimidating, so I, I had to go through a lot of kind of mental hula hoops to even work up the courage to actually start painting, but like that's that's like a whole other that's a whole other, other video. But <laughs> in twenty nineteen I started to take it seriously. So um what did I do? How did I improve? How did I go from this to this? Sorry, I'm trying to figure out where I am on they're not actually on the screen yet, surprise, this is gonna be post. So yeah, basically what I need to do, like I'm a very um, kind of procedural type of person. Basically, I knew that I needed to just start painting, like get over that initial fear of doing it, and then I can start isolating the steps that I needed to work on to get better. That is tip number one. Make a collection of work or look up the work that you already have done and specifically make note of every single thing that you don't like about it. This was one of the, the first illustrations that I did at that time, so this was again 2019, and it's just a little chicken, so it's it's not bad, right? Like it's okay because I had already been drawing for quite a while up to that point but there there was a lot of things that weren't working for me that weren't kind of matching the things that I was imagining in my mind so um, and I knew that and I just kind of had to suck it up and look at everything that was bugging me so I didn't like how I combined the mediums I didn't like the anatomy I didn't like the composition there was a lot of different things that weren't speaking to me I think the sooner that you can kind of isolate the things that you really need to work on then the sooner you can kind of work on that trajectory and like have like a solid plan for yourself that's specifically tailored to you. I know maybe you would feel a little harsh and you might have this um, this desire to be like, oh, it's all bad, I hate all of it, I'm just awful, but I really encourage you to do it objectively, like don't feel so personally connected to your artwork and I know that's something that I really struggled with when I first started out because I, I totally wrapped my identity in my, my art skills, so just it is what it is, and you can like strategically improve it if you can kind of set your ego aside for a little bit and like look at it in a way that is totally free of judgment. <laughs> yeah, have a solid structure of what you want to work on, and obviously take into consideration the, the fundamentals. So like um, value and, and color and anatomy and perspective and all those things are all very important as well. But I'd say start with something that is very specific to what it is that you want to do. So if you have um, something in mind, like you want to be a character illustrator, or you want to be an animator, then think about the qualities that make up that kind of profession, that kind of direction. So if you want to be like a character illustrator, for instance, and you're going to want to learn anatomy, you're going to want to learn um, perspective and like foreshortening and all of those things. Yeah, the sooner that you can identify that, then the sooner you've got this kind of trajectory laid out for you that you can kind of focus on. Because when you're starting to learn uh, any new skill, there's so many different things to learn that you can feel totally overwhelmed and not know where to start, and then kind of use that as an excuse to not start at all. So yeah, have a solid plan. <laughs> Step number two is to work from reference. And I know you probably hear that a billion different times, but honestly, it is true. Um, even if you're creating something from your imagination, you still have to base it in reality to some degree. So like everything that you're pulling from your imagination is still a product of your experiences of what you've observed in real life. So um, you might as well just kind of embrace that and 
learn to take what you, you see and understand it in a way that you can actually apply your drawing so that even the things that you're creating for your imagination, they, they feel more believable that way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break down how I use reference and then uh, hopefully this will help you because I know <laughs> there's a tendency when you're drawing from reference to just kind of tune out and just look, like almost trace with your eyes rather than actually observing and understanding what it is that you're, you're referencing. So what I like to do personally when I'm using a reference is to do that initially. So you'll have your picture and then you want to just recreate it as closely as you can. And just like the proportions and everything that you're kind of seeing, you know, make it accurate uh, as much as possible. And then once you've done that, I want you to kind of break down what you've, you've seen into simple form. So if you squint your eyes a little bit, then it helps you to kind of look at it in a really simplified way. So you'll see like if that form is a sphere or if it's cylindrical or if it's kind of like hexagonal. It gives you a better understanding of the underlying forms, the underlying structure of what it is that you're drawing. Once you have that, then I want you to try and draw it again, but like completely from your imagination this time. So um, don't look at your drawings even, don't look at the reference. Just try and recall everything that was in your memory to put it on the page. So and you'll kind of feel as you're drawing like what feels like you've actually retained it versus what you're like struggling to remember like oh what did this actually look like um and it's a really good exercise for kind of reaffirming what it is that you actually retained and what you didn't so once you have finished that then you compare the original reference that you used and then you can kind of make notes about what things you need to fix and what things you actually thought that you did well and i find that's really helpful if you do a few different iterations of this so like a few different times to try to copy the reference use your imagination compare fix mistakes yada yada and then Secondly, just your drawing. Just your drawing. It is a total lifesaver. Um, and it's one of those things that feels really, really awkward if you aren't experienced. Or even if you are experienced and you don't do it a lot, like when you're first jumping into gesture drawing, it feels terrible. And like you don't know what's going on, everything's going so fast, and you don't understand, and it's totally okay. <laughs> like. The goal with gesture drawing is not to make really nice drawings, uh, at least for me it's not, I don't know, but I, I do it one, to warm up, and then two, to kind of understand the flow and the rhythm in the different figures. So I like to use a website called Line of Action, and I'll put that somewhere on the screen. And um, on that website there is an option for humans and for animals, So and actually for hands and feet too, I think they're their own category. So it's totally great, I totally recommend it, and it's free, which is great. You can do like just a bunch of one minute or 30 seconds, or you can do like full class mode that they have. And the more that you do it, the more you'll get like um, just like an internal understanding or internal feel for the rhythm and the way that things are moving and the flow of the subjects. I do generally recommend that people learn with that first, so they don't get so caught up in the actual muscles and things right out of the gate. When you're thinking about all those things and all the different muscles and how they're inserting and like the names and, and the perspective and the foreshortening and like all these different layers at once, it feels totally overwhelming and uh, for me it makes my drawing super super stiff. So I like to um, either start with gesture drawing or like kind of do gesture in conjunction with something like uh, anatomy study and muscle studies and stuff like that. So number three is to copy what you like. So um, there, I think at this point we're all pretty familiar that like artists steal from each other. Like that's what we do. We, we look at other people's work and this is totally acceptable. It's not like, <laughs> I don't know why there's this weird stigma with like copying other people's work. Um, unless with a caveat, we'll say do not share it pretending to be the original artist or anything like that or like sell it for money um just purely for studies uh looking at other people's work and and copying it is a totally productive thing to do um but you need to go about it with you know the right kind of mindset so um when you are looking at other people's work um it's really important to isolate the things that you like about it so like why why are you drawn to this particular person's artwork what are the features, the qualities of it that you like? Um, and by doing that, it kind of helps you internalize what you're looking for in your own work. So when you're doing this, it's like you should be pulling from a bunch of different sources, like whether it's different medias, different artists, you know, it doesn't have to be all 2D art. Like 
whatever it is that you're trying to pursue. It doesn't have to be that. As you are doing this, kind of take note of which styles feel natural to you. Like what do you kind of gravitate towards? What comes a little bit easier than the other ones? Because I find, um, for me, when I was trying to copy from artists who I thought were totally great and totally amazing and I love their work so much, but it just, it felt so forced when I was trying to emulate their styles. That that meant to me that like just because I liked a style doesn't mean that I need to become that type of artist, you know what I mean? Like you're allowed to like something and not have to be like that person. So uh, honestly making that distinction for me was like a huge light bulb. <laughs> so um, and it doesn't mean that you can't study them, like you can still study what they do, but keep in mind that the goal isn't to become like a copy of that person. That's because it's just, if it's not natural to you, if it doesn't feel like it could make sense for the way that you work, then you're just gonna be like, kind of beating your head off the wall the whole time if it if it feels super awkward and clunky. And, and I did that for so long, just trying to, you know, emulate the artists that I liked that were completely not the way that I worked. Like I am somebody who works very kind of clean and specific and like hard edges and, and I was like referencing impressionist artists and stuff like that, which is great and it's totally valuable to study that work, but that's not the way that I work and that's not the way that I even want to work. So yeah, kind of having a little bit of an understanding of yourself is super important at this stage, but that is something that will definitely come with time too. Like when you're first starting out, you might not know what you want. You might have a billion different things that you like and you don't know what even feels natural at this point. So. There is a lot of like listening to your gut, listening to your internal sensations and like like how your wrist moves and how your arm moves and like what feels good to you. So that's a whole other process in and of itself um, that again, you'll, you'll pick up on that more as you get a little bit more comfortable. So but number four is to notice your tendencies. So this is kind of building off the last point, but um, when you're working, what are the ways that you draw that kind of annoy you? Um, what feels like, okay, I keep working in this particular way, like I keep making really heavy lines, or I keep shading in a way that feels really two-dimensional, or, you know, whatever it is, there's, there's gonna be things, specific patterns that you notice that you don't like, and you should have maybe even noticed this in the first step when you're looking at, you know, all the qualities that you want to improve on. Um, but I think it's also important to look at how you naturally work, what kind of qualities do you gravitate towards? So. For me, uh, all growing up, I was very, very line dominant, and I remember feeling like, well, you know, why don't I shade properly? Like, why is that such a struggle for me? And I even had, you know, teachers over over the years tell me like, oh, your work feels very cartoony. It's so line heavy. It's not, you know, properly three dimensional. And and I used to fight it for a really long time. And so I studied artists who worked in more of like a, a value focused kind of way and it just it never felt right and I felt like I was kind of bashing my head against the wall trying to fit myself into this type of style that just didn't work for me. So I found what was most helpful was to find artists who kind of have a style similar to mine. They have, you know, the certain tendencies that I have but in a more refined way. So once you find artists who are kind of doing the positive spin of the things that you find annoying in your own work, then it's, it's less like you're fighting yourself the whole time. Like you want to feel like it's working in conjunction with how you naturally work and you're not constantly trying to be something that you're not. Cause that is just, you're setting yourself up for heartache that way. <laughs> and this can actually apply to mediums as well. So, um, for me, I, coming from digital, I really liked the opacity of, of digital work and not having to you know, consider the white of the paper and the opacity and all of that, like with something like watercolor. So, um, what felt most, most natural to me was acrylic. And because it's very, very straightforward, there's not even like the, the chemicals and stuff that you need for oil paint. And, and the fast drying time of acrylic also kind of emulates the digital like way that I was used to working. So, um, I, I tried that and I really, really struggled to get the details and the high rendering that I was used to with digital work. So, um, I experimented with a lot of different techniques, a lot of different mediums, and now I've settled on combining it with colored pencil. So um, having those two things together really complements the way that I naturally work. And so 
the process has just become a lot easier on my head. And you'll you'll find that in your own work too, like as you try different mediums, really pay attention to what feels best to you. Like what are you drawn towards? So lastly, number five is to have a challenge for yourself. So um, honestly, one of the, this is one of the biggest tips for me. Like when I started out painting in 2019, I knew that I needed to like just do it. And that was kind of the first step for me was to just do the thing and get over that awkward hump of being afraid and like having to work up to that courage every couple of weeks or something. Like you need a consistent way of working that builds your confidence and then builds your skill and momentum that you're building and I think that's so important. So um, the first one that I did was like a 30 day sketchbook challenge. So just painting every single day for 30 days. And for that I had a, like a, a friend so it was like a little bit of an, an accountability thing for me. So totally tell a friend, do it with somebody else or like post about it online if that helps you. And it sucked, honestly, for the first while. Like I, there's a lot of times I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to do any work because I was so defeated from the last painting that didn't turn out the way that I wanted to. And it's so important to like show up the next day, even after you've made something that you don't like. And honestly, I can make a whole other video about just the importance of like a, a daily challenge. And I've done multiple, like the other one that I've done was like hundred birds in hundred days. And that one to me was even more significant because it was obviously the the span of time was a lot longer so I really had to solidify that kind of routine a habit and in the process I was painting something that I liked and I think that is probably one of the most important things if you're going to do a daily challenge is to isolate something that you genuinely really enjoy drawing or painting or whatever it is that you're doing and that way it's less like you're fighting yourself so again we're trying to make this as easy as possible on you so we're, we're choosing things that you like not necessarily things that you think that you should be doing. Like if you commit to 30 days of still lifes and you don't like still lifes, then you're probably not gonna have a great time. Not to say that that's not a great challenge, because it is, but you at least need to incorporate something that excites you. Otherwise, it's it's gonna be just that much harder to kind of make yourself show up every single day and actually produce something that you like. So have something like that, that preferably if you have a deadline on it, I think is super important. So you have a finished day, start date and it's just this finished product that you can look at and just be like a representation of your growth so you can see from day one to the day whatever how many days you've done it you can compare both of them and just see if you've made progress or not okay that's it for me um thanks so much for watching for tuning in uh hopefully you learned something or feel a little bit more inspired to improve but I think most importantly, like don't be super hard on yourself, which I know is, is kind of difficult to do, but it's important to go into this again, like feeling removed from your artwork, like you are not attached to the art product, right? So um, look at the things that you're creating a little bit more objectively, and that way when you make a mistake, you don't feel so personally attacked. Try not to rush the process. <laughs> okay, bye.